hundred percent raw. Never really hit the stage right there. It's a little bit warm of a temperature. Super duper. Sun, you have a lot of corn, a really good diet, specific breed of uh, work, really, really good flavor. And they also have the best of the best breed of Kool-Aid Bless. And it's a very specific make because the tide is different, the salt content is different. So those are the ones that are a little bit sweeter. Very, 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 very good. I know normally you don't need it to swallow it. Yeah. Flour, and you're going to rub it together like that to where the butter kind of disappears and goes all over the place. Okay? okay? Yeah. So, ready, go. Go. Now, on top of what you're holding, and sometimes I can use my pinky and my thumb behind these guys here to hold on to everything. Now that means everything's going to stick right inside here. And I glide on my second knuckle. And most important thing I can teach you about knife skills, okay, mm -hmm. is have the knife work to your advantage, okay? The knife is this long, use the entire length of the blade. So, you start at the tip and you end at the heel. Tip and heel, or heel and tip. Does that make sense? Mm. You can see a clear difference. Also, watch this. I'm just going. Mm. Oh, it sounds terrible. Look at these chives. They're all black. These are nice and green. These are gray. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You also can see, well, if you do that a bunch, they'll start turning your cut, your cutting board green. So we're going to slice. Mm. And adjust as you need. Very important. The base end this is the top end. I want to cut uh, from the this side, going not all the way to the end through, but all the way down to the cutting board. Okay. Mm -hmm. I take my target. I don't change anything. I'm a, a, a machine. I turn over and I cut and follow the arcs of the shaft. I move my shoulders all the way down to the end. Okay. The whole thing stays together. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> then what you do when you come back this way, slicing into the shallot, you have the smallest shallots you ever want. Okay, we call this a ciselé shallot in French. Okay, the most important thing is for crying and for quality of shallot that we slice into it and we cut just once, end plus. End pieces we're going to save because these are going to go inside of the brown dog. Okay. And pieces we're going to go in the rondad, we're going to puree it in this. little tiny switch costs us 40 euros today. 40 euros? Again, they're passing around. Yeah. It should smell like garlic. So what is it? Where, where, where does it come from? <laughs> so it doesn't really smell okay. like anything. What is truffle? Fungus. Fungus. A mushroom. It grows underground. It grows in clay. Okay? Underneath acorn trees. Okay. And between, uh, I think it's five and eight feet below ground. Okay? How they find them is they have uh, a pig or a dog who can smell that. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a very aromatic fungus mushroom as well. It smells like um, sourdough culture. Sourdough culture, yes. It, uh, there's many unctuous things that it can take after. Do you know what I mean? Uh, really earthy mushroom, uh, sure, sourdough, uh, all that kind of stuff. This color is awesome. Okay, this really deep dark black color. The fact that it's dense is a good, good, good thing. It's moist. It smells beautiful. It's great. That's what we want. So, what you want to do is you want to peel the outside barely. Okay. No, no, waste is zero. Happen in nature, you can't really uh, fake them. They, they fake them, um, Oregon fakes them a little bit, and uh, China. It's a really big black market here in France. Like, for example, if you go to uh, Alba, where you buy the white trucks in the market, they're not in the market. There's a guy in the parking lot sitting on his trunk of his car. Uh, and uh, you just know the guy who knows the guy who knows where the guy is. And you walk by and you look at him, he looks at you, and what's up? Want some sure. Yes. Boom. Opens the trunk and bam, there's a thing full of truffles. And uh, it's a it's a real, real, real And I'm gonna go back over there, cut them like that. And I'm gonna go back over there and cut them like that. And you're just gonna try to ask you, are you guys ready? Oh I do want it to hang over because what's gonna happen is boom, boom. There's a part right here where the silver seam goes underneath the uh, meat, and you can't really do anything about it. So you remove that like this, and you want to cut through right here, right? You, don't want, you can't really do anything about that. In this little extra stuff, it's just going to be either overcooked or undercooked. Then we take our goose fat here and want to score through it, okay? Using just the one that just a little bit of uh, milk, how to come together. Proper, nice. correct consistency of the French plum rouge is you Friday night when you're popping a beer or opening a bottle of Chardonnay. Ah. Uh,
Second time in a minute. So much fat comes off there. I can see it. We're almost at the point where I can change and add, go to. Now, if I was a real rainbow, I'd put the whole thing in there. That would be 500 grams to about 1,000. So be a little half enough. Half butter to potato? Yes. I like to use both kinds of mustard inside my vinaigrette. Okay. I like to use Dijon mustard. It has a lot of spice to it. You know what I mean? It has a little bit of taste. Okay, I'll use a little whole grain to make it kind of sweet. It makes me imagine how it's all mustard. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Part of the vinaigrette. Okay? Because this one already has a little bit of vinegar and vitamin to it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you didn't have any mustard, then you'd do close to half and half. Okay? Balsamic for sure half and half because balsamic is net tart. Okay? So you know. This is canola oil. Okay? So you want something that's pretty neutral. So grapeseed oil or canola oil, something that has a uh, fat but not necessarily taste. I like to have a little broken myself. Okay? You're gonna put your thumb on the top. And you're gonna pour it out. I keep on taking off the fat from my goose. About cooking red meat is the fact you need to let it rest. Okay? Resting the meat means that uh, the internal temperature becomes more even. Does that make sense? You have a steak that's like gray and purple and gray. That means the guy is lazy and did the rest kind of it. Yeah. And dog. It's our fish and potato puree. We'll do these plates. Cutting across. Across the grain. Across the grain. Slightly. It's like a 20 degree angle. And look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice and pink and beautiful, but all the way through. I can do it. Swoosh. Swoosh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Be the pure, be the pure. Right here, just see that? Ooh, Ooh this yeah, it smells so good. Secret sauce. The one you left it? Secret sauce? Good. Boom. No, no, no. Okay, that's it, guys. Now, they're just good. She's going to the restaurant.